How you doing film fans? Welcome back to Talking Through the Medias and I want you to prepare yourself for the Kate review. Now, if you haven't done so already, I want you to please think about becoming a subscriber to the channel. Hit the like button if you like this video and let's just keep talking guys. Now let's just get right into it. I was a little bit hesitant on wanting to see this film at first because it's sitting at a 25% as of right now on Rotten Tomatoes, but there was something about the trailer that just spoke to me. Kate is directed by Cedric Nicholas Troyan. It stars Mary Elizabeth Weinstein, Miku Martinu, and our beloved Woody Harrelson. Okay, so here's the plot. After she's irreversibly poisoned, a ruthless criminal operative has less than 24 hours to exact revenge on her enemies and in the process forms an unexpected bond with the daughter of one of her past victims. Right off the bat, I'm thinking about a lot of different movies that remind me of this plot, especially those tropes that you kind of get into with at first you do something wrong against the the person that you're trying to uh, help or get revenge with then they find out what you did then you know there's that little clash and then uh, eventually in the end you know they they make up and stay friends or forgiven right of course of course these same things are are into it so i'm expecting is this movie going to follow the same tropes? Is this movie going to be boring? Is it going to is it going to remind me too much of things that I've seen before? And those are legitimate fears that you're going to have going into this film. You're going to think, OK, Atomic Blonde. You're also going to think, of course, you're going to think John Wick. You're going to think about a lot of different movies that this could be emulating. What do we get? We got the most interesting cast that i have seen in a long time i'm not just talking about the main stars i'm not just talking about kate and, and ani and uh the character played by uh, woody harrelson i'm not just talking about our our big three i'm talking about everyone i mean even there's people with no lines or people with a few lines who delivered outstanding performances i mean there were characters who you knew weren't going to make it because they were obviously button heads with our, our hero. But for some reason, they didn't bore me. It wasn't one of those throwaway characters where it's like, ah, oh, you know what? Okay, we're just gonna you know get rid of this person until we reach the boss level of this video game. No, each character had style. And there was something about that word style that just kept repeating in my head. The, the cinematography, the use of colors. I mean, things that should not have worked. It, I felt like I was watching a movie that if I was not going to give it a chance, if I was going to just sit here and just hum and haw, I'm like, I would have I would have just made fun of it and said something like, oh, what are you trying to be like? Was this Tokyo Drift or things like that? But no, it used every all the elements in this movie it used exactly what was needed and it enhanced it I, I don't know how to describe it it was like i was watching a batman movie and that's ironic because <laughs> Liz, uh, mary elizabeth uh winston was in uh birds of prey but it felt like like japan was a character in this movie the the, the city was alive like uh, that must be the, I mean it, it can only be credited to to uh, Cedric Nicholas uh, Troyan the the director really pulled something amazing off in this film he brought the whole city to life uh, to me the use of the colors the the subtlety the camera angles I mean action angles and, and, and shots that that I mean they've been done before but the style was something I haven't seen either before or in a long time this is not one of those throwaway movies and I am so disappointed that it's sitting at the score that it's at at Rotten Tomatoes. I'm I believe that people are going to this film and expecting the same old thing. I don't know what it was, but I kind I'm not going to lie, I kind of felt like I was going to do the same thing, but as the the movie went along, I was appreciating characters who only had maybe 2 minutes of dialogue in the beginning that you never saw again but the performances were great. Some of the action uh, movie, you could, you could count the ballet with the, the choreograph and you could, you could see the punches being pulled because this is acting, right? But 
it didn't happen to a point where it took me out of the movie where it's like, oh, I couldn't believe she could pull that off. Oh, no way uh, that that character could could uh, get away with this. No, this was gritty. This movie was action packed. Very, I don't, I can't believe I'm saying this, but in a realistic kind of way, where it's just grapple and tackle, ground, uh, ground and pound, kick ass action. But it did it with a style that is so unique. Even though every little bit of, of the, the recipes in this in this cake, you've seen them before. You've seen the flour, you see the sugar, you see you, you see the eggs, you see everything, all these ingredients, you've seen them all before. But the way the director put it together, that chef smooch, it was something I, I I've never seen before. I, I always say, guys. The testament of a good movie for me is one that I could say I'll watch that again. I can watch I can watch this movie over and over and over again and probably see something new. But here's the thing. I I don't feel like I'll be bored watching it multiple times. Were they cheesy moments? Of course, there's always cheese in in, in an action uh, movie, right? But there was still a style. The cheese worked in the cake. I'm sorry it did. Here's a perfect example. The Ani character played by uh, Miku this character, if I was, again, if I was judging based on past movies, I would say a similar uh, approach would be the, the, the young lady from Rush Hour, for example. And after a while, that got annoying to me. Ani, Ani did not. I expected it, and that was the purpose of the character. Um, rich, spoiled kind of uh, type of uh, entitled little brat kind of a character. But she, this is, the, like I said, a great performance from a great actress and great directing pulled this, this performance uh, from her emotionally got me the the performance even when she was being a brat I, I loved her and and the chemistry the Batman and Robin-ness of it usually doesn't work for me all the time it feels forced but it worked so it was so much heart so much style I just keep coming back to that word because it's the best way I can describe it I recommend this movie again and again and again i would say that this movie deserved to be in the theater only because the the cast did an amazing job the extras did an amazing job that guy that was walking in the background never looked at the camera from left to right from right to left did an amazing job the director pulled something off that really spoke to me and i'm happy i got a chance thank you netflix for allowing me to screen this one early I appreciated it. I had a great time with it. And I can't wait till you all get to see this film. Go check out Kate because it is awesome. And hey, share your thoughts with me. If you agree with me or if you don't, if, you, if it wasn't your cup of tea after you uh, watch it or if you loved it like I did, put it in the box below. Let me know what you guys think. And as always, guys, let's just keep talking. And until next time, hey, like I said, hit the like and subscribe button. Share it with all your friends. And let's just keep talking, guys. Till next time, peace. Our supporters help make all this content possible, so make sure you check out our Patreon page so you can help us bring you the content you want. Push the pedal to the freaking metal. I'm turned up just like heavy metal. Yo. Up on another level, push the pedal to the freaking metal. I turned up just like heavy metal. Black.